Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later, as right now we're taking flight with this guy. PF-01 Red Falcon is a new Transformers-themed figure from third-party manufacturer TT Hongli and represents a very unique take on everyone's favorite treacherous Decepticon, it's Starscream. The real twist here is that now the Commander of the Seekers has been decked out with a rather majestic looking bird mode, complete with a sizable pair of wings that I absolutely cannot wait to see take flight today. The inspiration for this release is taken from an unofficial book of artwork known as T-Beast by Kuromochi Zukon Group, and whilst there are definitely some liberties taken in the translation to 3D form, it certainly captures the spirit of that original design. The book also contains numerous other examples of well-known Transformers characters being given similar makeovers with beast modes, some more expected than others. This isn't the first third-party figure we've seen using T-Beast as a reference, with Generation Toy already having a few such efforts in their roster. Let's see how Red Falcon compares today then. Last thing before we begin, today's video comes courtesy of TF Source, so I'll put a link to their site in the video description. The plan for today is to give you my first impressions before getting a full photo review up on their blog soon. So here is Red Falcon in his box, and it's a fairly nondescript affair, but a really nice uh, toy photography on the front, that looks good. And some more promotional stuff on the back, job done. But as ever, it's the contents we came to see, isn't it? I really am hoping that this thing is as good as it looks, because honestly, I've been really bowled away by some of the pictures I've seen, and I so want it to be good. Right, well, it's one of those funky multi-layered trays. So firstly, you've got the top layer here with the toy itself, some spare heads and some uh, some missile weapons, uh, or guns or whatever you want to say. But uh, And then underneath, you've got the instructions just here. I'm sure they'll be useful. And then you've got a flight stand and a couple of swords and a few other bits and bobs as well. So included in the box are this pair of null rays. I guess they're null rays anyway, if you go by the uh, kind of more classic interpretation of Starscream, but uh, they look really, really nice. Now you also get this pair of hot pink swords. And uh, why don't more toys come with hot pink swords, right? They look absolutely stunning. Really love the uh, translucent uh, kind of clearish plastic on these. It's um, just phenomenal, looks really, really good. And if that wasn't enough, you also get this this pair of kind of hot pink blast effect pieces. Now I initially thought that they were to go in the end of the null rays, but it turns out that actually they're for his wrists, which I'll show off in just a little minute, but they look exceptional. Now he also comes with these two additional faces, and uh, as, you'll, as you'll no doubt notice straight away, they're quite a stylized uh, affair, you know, and uh, we'll talk about the face sculpt in just a minute, but yeah, you do get two spare heads with him. There's also a very nice looking flight stand, which uh, requires a little bit of assembly right out of the box, but there you go. And in a slightly unprecedented move, there's this set of stick Stickers, this little sticker sheet here, which um, <laughs> kind of reminds me of the stickers from MP3, you know, Masterpiece, uh, the first Masterpiece Starscream in a funny kind of way. It's got that sort of similar look and feel to it, but they're absolutely tiny. Now here you can see some of that good detail just on there, it's, you know, little caution labels, things like that, but the text underneath is minuscule. I mean, I, I don't even know if it's words, actually. Certainly I can't read it to the uh, to the naked eye, do you know what I mean? And then there's lots of little symbols, different things going on here. It's really quite cool, actually. Um, you know, some little uh, logos and things here. Uh, I mean, I don't know that I'll necessarily be applying these. Uh, I do really like it and I like the inclusion, but uh, I kind of like the clean yeah, kind of cleaner look of the toy itself, but um, they are there uh, and I figured you might just want to see, you know, kind of what's on the sheet. Uh, so it kind of gives you a bit of an idea anyway, so uh, nice inclusion. And thankfully there's this very handy set of instructions as well, little instruction booklet, and uh, it's, you know, quite a few pages, but doesn't look too bad, so uh, check out Transformation in a bit, shall we? And of course you get the toy itself, and boy is it a thing. I mean, it's uh, hugely stylized, probably what, not what a lot of people are going to kind of, you know, think of with the uh, kind of classic Starscream look, but I love it. I, I was really into this toy from photographs, and needless to say, straight out the box, it's hard not to be impressed by the visual kind of styling and presence that this toy has. It's larger than I would have expected. Um, you know, we'll do some comparisons in a bit, but uh, quite a sizable thing, but just looks beautiful. It really looks like it's kind of been ripped straight out of a kind of a manga or, you know, anime or whatever. And it's, um, is that just me? I don't know, it's really kind of got that style uh, to it that uh, just looks absolutely beautiful in 3D form. Really, really uh, do kind of love the sculpt a lot. Uh, and it's very clean actually. If you kind of just uh, turn it to the side, you'll see that there's surprisingly little backpack going on there. 
and um, I think it, it, you know, it looks uh, looks really, really good. Looks very handsome from all angles. Uh, here's a here's a back view. Now I have actually just folded just quickly these little uh, bird legs up a little bit because actually uh, out of the box, and I think the correct configuration is like that, where you can see a little bit more of his robot mode back. Uh, which is fine, do you know what I mean? That's, uh, that, you know, just kind of hangs over his bum a little bit. So some people I'm sure may not like that so much. Uh, so just for my own benefit, my own purpose, I kind of, I don't know, it's just, I, that to me looks a little bit better. So that's probably how I'll be uh, having it. There's no right or wrong as such. Uh, but, uh, you know, you do you, you do you. Now, one of the first things to mention with this guy is that there's actually a lot of kind of different ways of displaying him. Uh, and, you know, we'll look at articulation in a bit, of course, but I'm, I'm talking about things like the wings, actually, because, uh, you know, these wings are already, I think, quite incredible because, I mean, they articulate out like that. They're nicely ratcheted, so they feel very, very solid, which is cool. Uh, but then he's got these kind of additional wing pieces as well, which can fan out even more. I mean, that just looks super cool to my eye, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, so there's a lot of kind of uh, ways of display, uh, you know, displaying the wings just like that. They also fold back quite a bit as well. Now, he does seem to have a bit of a, a propensity for wanting to lean backwards a little bit, um, but uh, actually you can get him standing stably, you just need to be a bit careful with it, that's all. Uh, but that again, you know, it's quite a stylized take, but uh, really like how that looks. And, and again, the wings feel, feel really, really solid. I really like that. Uh, as well as those pieces, there are also just underneath his arms here as well, some uh, little, uh, yeah, what are those? Like hip scabbards almost? Uh, again, is that like another, uh, I'm sure it's not meant to be at all, but it, it does feel like another kind of way that this toy reminds me a little bit of MP3 Starscream. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, I don't know, there is, a, there is something vaguely uh, uh, Shoji Karamori about this toy. I is, is that just me again? Am I seeing things? Because it certainly kind of has that vibe to me. But uh, yeah, between the, the kind of hip scabbards, you know, these bits, the, it almost looks like he's kind of got his own coronation gear, you know, the kind of cape. That's kind of what it reminds me of. I, I don't know, there's just a lot of visual trappings about this toy that I think are just stunning. Colours and everything are beautiful as well. Love this baby blue. It's really like, I mean, it's just superb, honestly. The, the Even the kind of this um, just off-white colour, kind of greyish colour is beautiful. The translucent plastic, everything all presents wonderfully. Uh, and he feels pretty good in hand actually as well. Like, um, he's not the heaviest thing. He's, he's fairly light and the plastic uh, feels solid enough. It doesn't feel brittle. It's not the, the hardest plastic that I've ever felt and, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll definitely be taking care with him. Do you know what I mean? But uh, I'm not currently just having given him a sort of cursory glance. I'm not currently feeling that there are any major, uh, you know, worries or anything like that. So he does feel all good to me so far. Uh, as I say, slight bit of giving the knees, but um, otherwise feels very, very solid on the whole. And I guess what is kind of cool is that other than maybe that uh, stylized head sculpt, which we'll look at in more detail in just a moment, uh, you know, there's not really a lot here to suggest that he turns into anything other than a plane. Do you know what I mean? It's, um, uh, you know, he's, he's not kind of animalistic. He doesn't really show any kind of bird parts or what have you. A little bit in uh, sort of the wings, if you do fan them out, maybe a bit more. But uh, on the whole, you know, he's just, he kind of comes across as a very stylized take on uh, the classic jet form star screen. And uh, I like that. I think, I think he looks amazing. Now, of course, we will need to talk about that head sculpt because uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a love it or hate it moment for a lot of collectors. I, I've already had a couple of comments from people saying, oh my God, does he come with a more normal face as well? Uh, no, he does not. Uh, you get the two alternate faces that you've already seen and this thing. So there is no like more classic kind of um, more G G1 typical head at all in this package. That is what you get. And uh, you, you know, as I say, people will love it or hate it. Uh, for my part, I think it looks great. Like I'm already, it is a shock. Like when you first see it in hand, you are like, whoa, that's a, that's a thing. But um, actually I kind of quickly, have already kind of gotten used to it, do you know what I mean? And it is, it, it does have a couple of cues on it, like the little uh, kind of vents on the side and, and just here, just by his, uh, his face. Uh, and I think that looks uh, looks really, really cool. Uh, some, I've already seen one comment from someone saying that it looks a bit like uh, Transformers Prime Megatron. And yeah, I can totally see that. I think it very much does have a, an echo of that design, but it still feels like Starscream. Too, which is good. Now the cool thing about this head design is that there is a bit of a light up feature as well. Now it is a bit of a pain to activate, like it's just, oh there we go, very hard little switch to, to kind of push for some reason. But uh, when you've done it, I think that looks pretty 
good. Now, generally speaking, I could take or leave light up gimmicks like this because uh, actually, particularly in this case, because you know, the, the eyes without it on tend to look a little bit dead, which is uh, not my favorite kind of thing. But uh, at least when it's activated, it does look really, really cool. And I like that he's got the little bit on the head crest just, uh, just there that lights up too. I think that's really nice. Now, coming down a bit, you've then got this chest area, which I think is just perfection. Really like the kind of stylized, uh, tapered look that's, that it's got going on just here. Uh, I think that's a, a really nice, uh, sort of design for his typical air vents on there. They look spectacular. That uh, translucent orange uh, chest piece just there, I think is just, the whole thing is breathtaking. Honestly, I know I'm, I'm gonna probably sound like it's a bit of a gush fest and it's not intended to be, but it is just breathtaking. And I know it's not much, but just look at how crisp everything is here and how well it's put together. It just uh, presents really beautifully, even under kind of really close examination. You know, like where there are paint applications on this thing, they're just very well done. Or it's like two pieces of different color plastic kind of you know put together or whatever it, it just looks great now coming back to that chest piece and I, I love the kind of um, kind of robotic detailing that's just underneath that orange piece there I think that looks uh, really really cool but there is actually a light up feature in here as well it's a little bit fiddly this one to get to now first you have to open up the orange uh, canopy itself just there and then this piece uh, is a little bit fiddly to get up. There you go, but it just folds up like so. And then there's a little switch just under there that, uh, you know, turns it on and push it all back in like so. Oh yeah, now we're cooking with gas. And <laughs> I think that looks really good. Actually, I kind of, it, it's very obvious that it's like a singular LED in the middle, isn't it? But still, uh, I think the overall effect and the way it kind of shines, it's nice. I've just killed a couple of lights in here just so you can get a bit of an idea of how that uh, how that presents a bit in, you know, with a, a little bit less light in the room. And um, yeah, it, it works for me, definitely working for me. Now, so really like the little design of the kind of crotch area just here. It's got these little, I mean, I guess they're hip flaps the way they kind of fold up, but uh, I think they look really, really cool. And I love the little white stripes on there too. His wings have got the classic G1 Starscream red stripe on them, which looks very crisply applied indeed and some nice little detailing, but it's not overdone, which I really appreciate. And it's kind of rocking these little uh, shoulder pads on there, which look really cool. And then some very unusual arms, actually. That's the one like real quirk of this design so far, uh, because actually out of the box, they come positioned like this, uh, with these kind of, you know, sort of angular uh, elbow pads <laughs> out to the side like so, and the same on the, on the hands. Uh, but actually, you know, then they don't bend forward at all. And in order to do so, you will need to turn them like that and then turn the hands as well, which is a, a little bit strange. I don't know, you know exactly what to make of that because it obviously arguably it looks better uh, you know, with that out to the side, but then you, you can only articulate them, uh, the arms inwards. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of an unusual one. And then coming down to the bottom, we've got some very high, uh, heavily stylized feet as well and, uh, and legs. And I, I really love the legs on this thing. I think they look uh, just beautiful. Again, really kind of playing into that anime style. Uh, is that just me? Again, you tell me. But uh, I, you know, I really, really like how it looks. Uh, and uh, yeah, very beautiful angular sculpt indeed. Uh, just notice here you've got some uh, I think it's metal actually, I think they might be metal of some form, these feet, and they're obviously painted so they shine a little bit brighter than the blue, uh, the kind of bare plastic blue in other areas. Looks like he's kind of almost got a pair of uh, you know high heels going on with the thrusters sticking out the back there, but uh, it really, really works, uh, and I just think they look great. Uh, what is slightly weird is the knees, because he's got these kind of kneecap things here, which uh, are almost independent of the rest of the leg. Uh, hang on, he's going to go backwards. There we go, almost. And uh, they are a weird one because when you bend at the knee, they go with the, the top of the leg, with the thigh rather than the bottom. So yeah, that's a little quirk that I need to kind of get used to, if anything. Overall though, that is a very, very handsome toy indeed. Absolutely love the look of this thing. I will stop saying that in a minute, I promise. But uh, honestly, I'm just... Um, quite taken with it so far. Now let's just talk about those alternate faces for a minute because uh, here's the first of the two and this one is kind of a bit more of a I suppose approaching a normal face in that the mouth is closed uh, so yeah it looks really good again I mean uh, you, you know you've really got to buy into the uh, stylized interpretation of these faces but uh, now in order to swap them out I initially thought that it was just like a pop on and off ball joint affair but actually I wouldn't recommend that because it's very very tight on the ball joint so actually I just unscrewed uh, the head slightly there's just two screws uh, just at the back uh, and just kind of loosened it off a little bit just to kind of give it a little bit of clearance and that's uh, that's done the job nicely so this one looks good however it's this option that I just think is absolutely perfect the old Starscream smirk on this uh, this other alternate face just here and it works 
a charm. That is the character to a T. Even in this, uh, again, this very kind of unique interpretation of him, uh, they've, they've done it really, honestly, justice. It's, it's great. I mean, genuinely, this feels like whoever designed this loves Transformers, loves the character, and, uh, and just gets it, do you know what I mean? But, but equally come with a, a really unique take. And I, I think if you're not bought into that head sculpt yet, you're just not gonna be, do you know? Because <laughs> that's as good as it gets. Uh, I love it, I really, really do think it looks great. Alternatively, someone did ask me already what he would look like with uh, a sort of more traditional Starscream head. And uh, here you go, I've stuck one of the uh, Make Toy Seekers noggins on him. And uh, what can I say, it looks too small, doesn't it? It does actually fit on the ball joint, which is mad. Same size ball joint, roughly, but. Uh, yeah, it just looks uh, too small. I think stylistically it could work if that was your thing. For me, actually, I'm now totally bought into the head that comes with this guy. So I don't know, if anything, this now looks strange to me. But uh, there you go. If you wanted to see it, that's it. Now we've gone on long enough. It's about time to give him his null rays, isn't it? And uh, weirdly, weirdly with, the, with these ones, they clip onto his shoulders instead of onto his arms. Lo and behold, and... Uh, <laughs> It's a, yeah, it's a strange one. I kind of, not sure about it. I don't know, I, I much prefer, or would have preferred to see them on his arms somewhere. I guess it's because, you know, obviously the shoulder pads do stick out a little bit, although that's actually not 100% true to the T-Beast uh, design. And, uh, you know, then you've got the, the kind of massive uh, elbows as well, uh, although you can fold his arms the other way. Uh, I don't know. Could they have gone somewhere else? I, I'm not entirely sure about it, I've got to be honest. But uh, they do extend a little bit as well, so uh, if indeed that's your preference, you can make them a bit longer, which I think actually looks uh, looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's going to take a bit of getting used to, because it means that also the way that the arms articulate, it's not obvious how you would point them forward even. I guess, yeah, I just can't kind of get used to these null rays being on his uh, kind of shoulder pieces, just because, I don't know, like even posing them sort of in a sort of classic seeker, you know, look at me, I'm firing at your type pose you know they, they're just kind of stuck on the sides there so you've you've got to have them pointing forwards uh, because that's really the only kind of way that it works and uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's just a bit awkward. Yeah, because there is no way for these things to fan out at the sides or anything like that. So they, they end up kind of feeling a little bit more just like purely decorative, if anything. Hopefully they'll be a bit more useful in the bird mode. But uh, yeah, in terms of robot mode, a little bit awkward. Now, I guess you can just kind of point them forward like that. So uh, that's something, isn't it? It does look kind of cool, actually. Now, I was also to show you these uh, kind of blast effect pieces, which I, I figured, you know, just plugged into the end of his, uh, his null rays. But I was wrong. I was wrong, and I'm not afraid to admit it. Uh, actually, they just peg into... He's got these, like, little uh, peg holes just on his uh, the sides of his wrists there, uh, which look quite cool. And they kind of peg in like so. And uh, yeah, make of that what you will. I mean, what are those? Are they like knives? Are they like, are they, are they guns in there? I think they're guns. And I think that's kind of still a blast effect piece, but just from like a little kind of laser thingy just in his wrist, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, either way, they look pretty ace. Absolutely love the, the sort of translucent plastic effect and the way that they count the, uh, capture the light. I just think it's glorious. The color is beautiful as well. Let's get more hot pink on Transformers. That's my opinion, personally. I'm always for it. I think it always works. You know, it kind of really reminds me of, uh, you know, the, the sort of latter days of European Generation 1. Just absolutely love it. What people erroneously call G1.5 sometimes, but uh, I don't hold with that. It's just me, but uh, I'm a grumpy old man as I am. I mean, let me just say, if you're still not feeling this toy, I definitely am. And I, I you know, I think it looks glorious. I absolutely cannot wait to take pictures of this thing. Now, you've then also got these pink swords, which fit really quite securely just into his, uh, into the palms of his hands. They've got little uh, peg holes in them uh, and usually these ones actually they've got peg holes in the in the cell in the blades in the handles uh, in the handles and then uh, pegs in the hands so a little bit of a, a twist in how that's normally done and yeah they feel super secure once they're in the, ha the hands wrap around really nicely the kind of claw like hands and they just look exceptional love those hot pink swords again and uh, it really adds something to the design of this toy. Uh, just, yeah, w exactly what I wanted from it. I mean, at this point, I'm questioning why more Starscream toys don't come with swords. It just seems like such an obvious thing for him, right? Like maybe it's because he's traditionally a bit of a coward and he wouldn't want to get that close. But uh, love it, absolutely love it. Just think uh, it just sets this toy off remarkably well. Man, this thing just looks absolutely glorious. I'm just having such a fun time just kind of messing around with it, posing it, whatever else. 
beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now, speaking of articulation, you've got a lot of range at the head indeed, and at the neck, because the neck also can move uh, quite freely. And the head itself is on a ball joint, so you get big range of motion there, all the way up and down, side to side, whatever you want. Now, the shoulders are on clicky ratchets, as you can probably hear. Not the strongest ratchets I've ever heard, but they uh, they feel really nice. Quite soft ratchets, but they hold very nicely, so absolutely no worries there. And then uh, just at the arm here, obviously at these kind of shoulder joint, that will bend upwards just to about, about 45 degrees, maybe just a little bit more. The actual shoulder pads, such as they are, uh, don't move too much. I mean, actually, no, they will move up just a little bit like that, so just a bit stiff. Uh, but they will kind of fold up a little bit like so, which actually gives you a little bit more just there at the shoulder as well. You then do have a bicep swivel. Uh, and uh, now for the <laughs> for the elbows, they're a little bit weird, a little bit weird because uh, you've got double hinged elbows. Uh, so they, they will bend quite far, but I do think that they look slightly awkward. There's this uh, just this kind of visible gap just there a little bit. Uh, it's not bad, it's not too bad, but uh, yeah, a little bit of a strange one. Now, as already mentioned, there is wrist swivel, very squeaky wrists, uh, which they, they come positioned out the box like that. And I do think that they look a little bit more natural like that because they obviously the hands have this kind of piece hanging off there, this little like blaster piece, which is where the um, weapons effect pieces uh, peg into. Uh, but uh, you know, if you want them kind of looking a bit more natural uh, in terms of how they pose, it's going to be that way. And then each of the fingers is an independent piece. It's kind of molded into this kind of slightly bent, uh, you know, position like that but they're kind of like quite claw-like in nature. And then the thumb is on a ball joint as well. Now, one thing that's becoming a bit of a trend on a lot of Starscream toys is that there's no way swivel. There's a tiny bit of movement. So you might kind of initially think that uh, there is, but there, there definitely isn't. Uh, but it does have these little kind of hip flap pieces that can kind of fold up and everything as well. Now the hips uh, kind of look like they're big ball joints, but they're not. It's actually on, uh, it's, it's, it's ratchets. <laughs> and uh, so that moves all the way up like so, bit of a squeak going on there as well. Uh, but that feels quite strong, quite solid, and then can move out to the side. That ratchet's even stronger, actually. Now, I do definitely wish there was a bit more solidity at the knees because just that joint there, uh, it's not loose by any means, but you can see if I kind of, you know, flop it back and forth a little bit, it, there is a bit of give in it, definitely. Uh, and I wish that that was just a little bit stronger. I might see if I can tighten it up a bit. Um, but uh, there's a, a fairly decent range of motion there. You get about 90 degrees uh, at the knee itself, won't go Oh yeah, I actually will go further. There's a there's another joint just in there that if you push a little bit harder, uh, it will go just slightly further than the than the 90. So that's something. And then as I uh, as I mentioned earlier, you've got this piece, uh, kind of knee pad piece, which is uh, it, yeah independent and uh, kind of you know just needs to be moved around a little bit in order for the knee bend to look. Uh, maybe a bit more natural because otherwise it, it, it doesn't go with the leg. Uh, so that's just something to kind of bear in mind. That's all that when you're articulating those legs, you've got that separate piece as well. And the feet actually have quite a bit of articulation in them. It's got these uh, little toes that will move back and forth like so. Uh, and there is a ankle tilt as well, a bit of a rocker. Not much of one actually, I would like a bit more. Uh, it actually will bizarrely go further outward than it will inward, which is uh, is quite unusual. Uh, but uh, but hey ho, and actually the whole the whole foot moves as well as just the toe, which I think all told makes him feel very articulated and poseable on the whole, and he feels very stable as well. I think you know there is, as I say, a little bit of giving those knees, but actually uh, I'm not finding it a huge problem overall. And uh, yeah, I, I just think he looks beautiful. I, and here I've got you know all his, his kind of wings and uh, hip scabbards and everything fanned out, and uh, I just think yeah, he looks terrific. Now, in keeping with him feeling like a real display piece, you've got this uh, flight stand here as well, display stand, and uh, it looks uh, very nicely made. I mean, it's quite wide, obviously, it's a fairly sizable old thing. Uh, it can be adjusted in several ways. Firstly, you can adjust uh, on several different peg holes there to kind of get the angle of elevation that you want, like so. Uh, and then actually this uh, top piece will slide up and down uh, just like that. And then there are two different connector pieces that go in on the top, just like that. That's the first one. And that just very simply plugs into the hole in his bottom. And there you go, all posed up on the flight stand and it looks pretty magnificent again. I do wish that he could actually sit at a slightly sort of uh, more forward angle. I did try that and it will do that, but then uh, it's not the most solid as well. He slid off a little bit. So uh, I've kind of gone for a slightly more kind of upright angle anyway, just to make sure that he's on uh, suitably. I'm sure you can mess around with it and figure it out a little bit, but uh, I do think he looks, uh, he looks pretty good. So yeah, pretty nice robot mode, all things considered. And uh, here you can see him uh, just in comparison. We 
with some of the Make Toys Seekers. Uh, you've got obviously their Meteor, Lightning and Skycrow, which is their, their original trio anyway. And uh, it, obviously the reissue of Meteor is coming up now. This is the original version uh, here, uh, but uh, very excited about the, the old reissue as well. Should be out soon. And uh, yeah, it's interesting to see because actually uh, old Red Falcon is a large dude. I would not really sort of appreciated until doing this comparison just how sizable he is versus the likes of Make Toys Meteor, which of course is the same size as MP11 and we assume the same same size as MP52 as well, the new star screen that's uh, on the way soon. Will TT Hongli ever do Skywarp and Thundercracker repaints of this guy? I guess we'll have to see, won't we? But uh, for now, here he is We're also with um, MP36, uh, Megatron and uh, Transform Element Op Leader. And you can see again, he's a sizable old chap, isn't he? Just uh, quite a bit bigger. Uh, than both of them, particularly with those uh, those wings. And then as this guy's a bit of a, a weird take on a familiar character, I figured why not uh, show him off versus uh, a couple of other weird and wonderful takes on that same character. Well, kind of, anyway. You know what I'm going to say in a minute about that one on the right. Let's We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, anyway, first of all, we've got Make Toys Galaxy Meteor uh, just here. So another Make Toys product, but uh, of course that is a take on Cybertron. Starscream from the Unicron Trilogy, uh, so you can just see how they stack up there. And then of course we have 3-0, or uh, previously 3-A, Blitzwings, not actually Starscream. I know, I know, and let's not get into all of that business again. Uh, it is actually Blitzwing, but of course the Starscream design from that film, uh, the Bumblebee film, is very, very similar. Uh, you know, for the, the kind of brief period that he's on screen anyway. So there you go, just an interesting one to see. What's that now? You want a bit of Bayformer Starscream as well? Well go on then, you lucky devil. Devils. No say I never treat you to anything, eh? Here he is with Beast Wars second Taco Tank, just because, I don't know man, there's not really a lot of opportunities to show this thing off and it's glorious, so there you go. Bit of a weird and wonderful one, eh? And then of course here he is with the other sort of major T-Beast uh, sort of third party toy that's around at the moment, Masterpiece style third party. T-Beast homage. Uh, this is Generation Toy Red Bull, a review of which also exists on the channel, so you can check that out if indeed you want to. And uh, yeah, they come from the same same source. And uh, it's really interesting to see. Of course, one is significantly larger than the other, but actually I kind of feel like that works in some strange way. Do you know what I mean? The, the scale of them and everything else. Uh, stylistically, they match really nicely. I think the finish on uh, old Red Falcon here is superior overall. And uh, you know, the problem with um, Red Bull uh, Red Bull and Red Falcon, look at that, I hadn't even clocked that, but uh, there you go. And uh, yeah, anyway, the, the problem with Red Bull is that uh, his wrists are slightly loose and whatever else, but he's still a really nice toy. Uh, and actually, if you were thinking of setting up a, a whole masterpiece style T-Beast lineup, this is a good place to start. And then speaking of T-Beast, I think it'd be fun to see him versus the actual drawing from the book itself, just to kind of get a real, uh, you know, a real comparison going on. Uh, although we saw it in the intro, which I uh, actually haven't made yet, so uh, go figure, hey? <laughs> uh, but there you go, you can see how they look together. And uh, yeah, clearly, uh, Red Falcon is a you know a, a bit of a stylized interpretation of this drawing as well. I mean it's not completely accurate. I think it would have been made you know hard to make it completely spot on. Much in the same way that Red Bull uh, also you know kind of picked and choosed uh, its its influences a, a little bit. But um, I think overall uh, you know the wings is kind of the major departure here, and like some elements in, in you know, areas such as the knees and things like that. And uh, but they've kind of captured it at least. You know what I mean? It's a very loose interpretation of that drawing. Anyway, it's time for transformation, which I'm uh, sort of looking forward to, but really intrigued to see how it'll go. So let's check that out and get on to his bird mode.
Wow, you know what, I, uh, <laughs> I review a fair few toys and uh, it's always nice to see something that feels a little bit different, a little bit creative, a little bit kind of ingenious in some way. And this certainly fits that bill in terms of how it transforms. Not seen anything like that before and yeah, very, very unique thing. Surprisingly not too challenging either actually. I mean, some real fun bits. Love the way that the wings transform. That's, uh, dare I say, majestic. <laughs> uh, and the body as well, most of it. There's, uh, I do have a bit of a grumble about the robot mode legs and kind of how they come together, but uh, it's not quite as elegant as the rest of it, but it's still okay. And I think that's mainly on account of them just being, you know, a pair of folded up robot mode legs, such as they are. I mean, it's, it's fairly obvious, you can sort of see it there. Um, although, you know, I do kind of like the way that the feet become sort of rear tail feathers and things like that. It does sort of work and sort of not work. You know I mean? But anyway, in terms of transformation, it gets a little bit unclear because the instructions uh, are very, very uh, easy to follow until that point, And then they just kind of give up, if anything. Thing. They're just like, and the legs, and then just don't really show you what to do. But uh, hey ho, we figured it out. Now, fortunately, there are plenty of clever little tricks along the way that really kind of make up for it. And it's not that actually the leg transformation is bad, it's just, you know, it's just maybe kind of not as good as the rest. As I say, really love the way that the wings fold out and transform. That is quite spectacular. And the upper body as well, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty clever. Actually, the upper body is quite classic Starscream, really kind of a couple of bits reminded me of MP3 yet again, you know, for the third time. I've mentioned that toy today. Uh, how weird is that? So uh, yeah, it, but it all overall comes together quite nicely. And yeah, as alt modes go, it's certainly a thing. It's uh, it's quite something to look at. The wingspan is massive. Like it's a it's a big old thing. Let me tell you that big old toy, uh, and it's going to take up quite a bit of room on the shelf. We'll take a look at the wings in detail in a minute. Uh, as for the general shape of it, I don't know. I've got to be honest. I'm not getting falcon like that's if i look at it now that's not the first thing i think of i don't it doesn't immediately scream falcon to me if anything i've got a maybe an altogether different bird in mind <coughs> I kid, I kid, and you know, in fact, actually, the when you look at the kind of upper body of this thing, you know, like the neck and the head and the wings, I do get a little bit of falcon going on. I think, if anything, it's the kind of lower half, you know, it's like the, the rear, the backside of it and the legs and all of that, that uh, look a bit, I don't know, goose-like or turkey-esque to me. Uh, I mean, look, I'm not an ornithologist, as you know, but... I, I don't know, it, it, that's the vibe that I get from this thing, <laughs> a little bit, kind of a bit mix and match on the old birds. Maybe maybe it's just me, I don't know. Anyway, pretty mean head sculpt on this fella, really, really like it. Doesn't necessarily give me Starscream vibes, even if it is an alt mode, but I still think it looks pretty good. A uh, bit of light piping on the old eyes there, that seems to catch the light quite nicely so far, and I do think that this kind of stylized and again kind of angular sculpt really kind of works. Uh, and you can just uh, move the little beak there as well, so that's pretty cool. I think that's a win. Now, weirdly, this dude still has the old uh, cockpit section fairly prominently on his neck just there. And uh, it does actually look really nice, although it's a bit kind of confusing as to what the nature of uh, the design is, is going for, I guess. But uh, hey-ho, as long as you kind of swing into it a little bit and don't worry about it, I think it looks uh, it looks pretty good. You could always, I guess, imagine that someone's riding in him and, I don't know, he's still in a beast form or... Who cares, really? It looks it looks cool. Now, whilst the general design of this thing is relatively sleek, there is a there are a couple of bits that kind of you know slightly portray that, I guess. And that, uh, one of those, I think, is this piece here, which uh, because the wings don't fan in any more than that. So uh, we'll talk about the wings more in a minute, but they won't uh, actually move that way in any more. That's as far as they go. Which actually I think is a, a bit of an oversight. I kind of wish that they would. Uh, I've already tried to do it and sort of wanted to do it a couple of times just with posing, uh, kind of messing around with him quickly. But uh, anyway, I'm getting off on one. But uh, what I was going to say is that it doesn't hide this sort of fairly obvious uh, section here, which is what connects the legs uh, onto the main body. And um, it's not bad at all, but it's just it's it's fairly visible, I guess, and uh, just looks a little bit messy. Now, I've already mentioned the, the wings a bit and uh, the fact that they look really, really stunning. And, uh, and I stick by that. I think they, they do look amazing. Really like the design. Really love actually how, and I've, I didn't sort of touch on it earlier, but how the, the classic Starscream wing shape is there for the robot mode and uh, how that sort of fans out into these bird wings. And uh, it's very cool drone transformation, as I already mentioned. Really like it. But, you know, quite simple, but I do love the kind of flip that it, it does and, and how this piece comes in. Uh, so I, I like that, even though it's a bit of a departure from the T-Beast model, because of course it has more stylized wings in the robot form, I think it, it's really nice on this toy. What is a bit unfortunate is that there's, I mean, there's really no articulation to be had in these wings now, because this piece uh, kind of, you know, the way it obviously pegs in along the side, I guess you could undo it, 
but um, you know, it's not really designed to do that. And then, so it kind of leaves you with the only articulation being to, to kind of move the wings up like that. Uh, they can't even sort of fan down. So, I mean, you obviously got the little bits on the end as well. So in theory, you could kind of articulate those a little bit, but uh, yeah, fairly stuck pair of wings. And yeah, it's definitely this bottom bit here that is kind of the least graceful aspect of this and kind of definitely, uh, you know, it definitely betrays the kind of uh, Falcon-esque nature of the uh, of the alt mode, I would say. The, I don't mind, I do, as I say, I do like this and the kind of rear tail feather look, and I like the idea of the thrusters. These little rear wings are cool and in theory it all kind of comes together i just think that these legs are too chunky that's there's too much there too much bulk uh, and, it, and it's fairly obvious so and um it doesn't help as well the little uh, falcon legs that they're a bit useless like not useless but uh, not really up to the job let's say so yeah just coming down here and looking underneath and uh I don't know, something about these legs just doesn't work for me. I think it's the way that they're just kind of pinned into the side. Uh, they're pegged on either side here, and uh, the pegs do come out quite a bit, so uh, you find that you have to kind of readjust them uh, quite a lot, actually. Uh, it's not, yeah, even just there, look, you can see it's just kind of popping out uh, under, under the weight of it, really. It's not even like a heavy toy, but it's just, you know, not great that little peg. It's sort of supporting the weight. It could just be a bit better. Um, and then, I don't know, there's just something about the design of them, and I think it's the, the sort of the width of this, you know, the sort of the proportions, this sort of big bulky bit in the middle with the way that the legs are sort of stuck on the sides, that just, it's a bit chicken-esque actually to me. I, do you know what it is? It's chicken, it's, it's a bit like a chicken. And then these legs look a bit chicken-esque as well. And uh, yeah, just, it doesn't work for me so much. Now, I, I didn't think that they would initially, but the legs will hold the body, as you can see there. That's entirely unsupported, by the way. And, uh, but not very well, do you know what I mean? It's, it's very, very uh, unsteady on his, on his feet. They have a habit of, of just kind of popping out at the sides. And again, that's those, uh, those little pegs. Uh, and then the whole thing just ends up on his belly, which is, you know, not really what you want. Uh, so again, just doesn't feel particularly graceful. Uh, and I don't know, just with that very wide-legged stance uh, and the legs just kind of pinned it on the side, he almost looks like he's squatting to do a dump or something. I, don't know, I know that's not like the most um, tasteful way of me describing this thing, but uh, I guess sometimes you just got to go with the imagery that's in your head, don't you? So yeah, maybe a bit of a mixed bag on the whole on the bird mode, but uh, you know, there's enough here actually that on balance, I think it's pretty successful, you know, and I do like it. Like a, it's it's a fun transformation. I like the general look of the bird mode, uh, you know, and, and I can sort of see myself coming back to it. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's not one of those where like the, the negatives outweigh the, the positives or anything like that. I think on balance, it's, it's a good effort, it's solid. Oh, and just before I forget, I figured it was worth getting a shot of the underneath of this thing as well, because someone's always curious about what that looks like. I think it's pretty tidy, actually, on the whole. I mean, you can definitely see some folded in robot mode arms and things going on there, but, uh, you know, on the whole, I think it's pretty good. And of course, if you want to use the flight stand, the little port for doing that is just there. So you can just put that little piece in there and then we'll connect it onto the stand. And lo and behold, there we go. I think that looks pretty good, actually. Uh, slightly more graceful, maybe, on the stand, actually. I'll, uh, I'll give it that, do you know what I mean? It kind of doesn't have that squatted chicken look so much. Uh, I think with the kind of, you know, with it, with the, the wings fan out look fab, first of all, uh, and with the body and everything kind of a, in a bit more of a flight position. Uh, yeah, I think, it, uh, I think it works pretty well. I think it works pretty well. Yeah, I think that looks pretty awesome, actually. I'm really, really digging it. And uh, it definitely looks better on the stand overall definitely uh, and uh, yeah I love the way the wings look and uh, just kind of yeah quite majestic again there you go uh, I will say it doesn't feel the most stable I mean there's definitely a bit of wobble to it just there uh, I mean I do have it on the highest setting so maybe I'm not really helping myself uh, but it does also feel like it's gonna just topple forward a little bit if you're not yeah there you go. I'm a bit nervous about it so maybe just one to be uh, kind of super careful with you can also of course uh, fan the wings down like so and that's gonna you know just obviously create a little bit more stability for you so uh, maybe just one to kind of consider yeah actually wings down in that position already feels a lot more secure so that's good and uh, yeah what can I say I think it looks uh, looks pretty nice now, of course, we haven't yet, but you can also install the null rays onto him as well. So for bird mode, you just want to collapse them up like that. And actually just uh, the little holes, the little uh, peg mechanisms there just kind of fold forward, uh, push forward like that. So that they're a little bit uh, kind of more truncated, as it were. And they just peg back into the shoulder pads from the robot mode. So maybe that's why uh, they are the way that they are uh, in robot mode. But hey, and uh, actually, I think that works quite well. It maybe would have been nice to have them on the underneath of the wings, 
uh, you know, to in a sort of more traditional look. But I guess then you would have ended up with um, little peg holes and things like that in front of the uh, in the front of the wings. So actually, this this works pretty well as well. Man, it would definitely be quite something, wouldn't it, if these guys do make a, a Thundercracker and a Skywarp as well. Just imagine three of these things. My word, absolutely massive that will be. I mean, he really is a sizable old thing, as you can see here, if you put him next to something like uh, Planet X's Menios, their Desaurus, which I uh, just reviewed the expansion kit for on the channel just the other day, uh, you can kind of get a sense of the size of him. I mean, uh, wingspan-wise, he absolutely dwarfs something like Ismenios, although the actual body is probably sort of comparatively the same size, so it's interesting to see. And then I think one comparison that really does show the size of him very nicely indeed is this, which is with MPM-10 Starscream. I mean, really any jet mode Starscream, but this one will do, right? Like, it'll fill in quite nicely for that. And uh, you can see that just with that wingspan again, it, yeah, he's, he's a big old thing. And then, lo and behold, here he is with fellow T-Beast homage Red Bull. And uh, actually, I think they both look pretty good together. I kind of like it. Uh, very stylized, both of them. I mean, I think actually Red Bull comes much closer in this mode to the drawings from the book, T-Beast. But uh, still, you know, they both work in their own way. And uh, what a time to be alive, eh, when you've got stuff like this going on. So, where are we up to with this guy overall? Well, you know what, I'm impressed. I love the robot mode. I think it's uh, really, really, on the whole, really glorious. You know, there's a couple of quirks to it, like the arms and things like that, and I do wish that the knees were much more solid than they are, but still, it works. It's such a good robot mode that it almost kind of carries the whole package, right? Uh, the transformation's a lot of fun, and uh, for the most part, again, and uh, the bird mode has its quirks, but it displays wonderfully on the flight stand. And uh, given the kind of level of creativity on offer here and what this kind of represents, I, I really hope that they do more, do you know what I mean? And that they uh, kind of go, go a bit crazy with it almost. And uh, so in that regard, I'm, uh, you know, I'm feeling generous and I, what can I say? I, I really like it. It's definitely, definitely for me, a toot. Now, as already mentioned, this guy comes courtesy of TF Source, so I'll put a link to their site in the video description below in case he takes your fancy. But what are your thoughts anyway on old uh, Red Falcon here? Do you like the look of him? Is it a bit too out there for you? Are you kind of more, you know, traditional G1 star scream and that's what you want? Tell me what your thoughts are, because I really am interested to hear. And uh, do me a favour as well and drop me a like, it'll really help me out. If you uh, could do that for me, drop me a like for the video, that'd be great. Otherwise, that's it from me, so enjoy the rest of your day and TTFN. Thank <laughs> you.